Hello, Happy New Year. Uh, this being the start of 2019, I thought I'd just quickly go over one of the, about the only achievements that I had last year, which was to read 100 books uh, through 2018. I'm not going to go over every single book here because that would be rather tedious, but if you are interested in any, any of the books that I read, I wrote uh, reviews of every single one and posted them on Goodreads. The link is at the bottom of this video, so be my guest to have a look there. But I'm going to highlight 10 books just to show you the kinds of stuff that I've been reading and that you might be interested in. First one, number one, I read this one was the first one I read of the year, which was Tokyo Seven Roses, which is the two part, two novels, I mean about this thick, uh, two books about an unemployed fan maker, Japanese fan maker, after the war, well actually starts off before and during the war. It's um, kind of a bittersweet comedy. Um, the Americans, uh, in this story, the Americans decide, or one of the Americans decides, he's going to destroy the Japanese language by killing all of the kanji and removing kanji from the Japanese language. And uh, this nefarious pl plot, our hero fights hard against, um, with the help of his seven beautiful daughters who are sleeping with the uh, uh, American generals. Uh, it's good. Um, very, very good book. Uh, I recommend you look out for that. I don't think there's an e-book e version of that. Um, I got that through Abe Books. Okay, another book, uh, slightly more well-known maybe, is uh, this guy, A Quiet Place by Seicho Matsumoto. He's dead now, but um, in the 1960s and 70s was a key uh, Japanese crime writer. This one is quite a good one about um, a bureaucrat in the Japanese uh, government who, does he, oh, I can't remember if he, uh, oh, well, I don't want to say too much. <laughs> uh, but it's a, um, there's a little, there's a big twist in the middle of this, um, but it's about, well, one of the themes of the corruptions of the 1970s of Japan. That doesn't sound like I'm selling it very well, but it's a very good uh, mystery, I enjoyed that. Okay, if you don't know this guy, you probably should, uh, Alan Booth. Uh, the Roads to Sat uh, Sata. Um, anyway, that's his classic work, and this is actually a first edition book that I found in Jimbocho for 400 yen, I think it says on the back here. Wow, the idiots. I don't know what they're giving away. This is perhaps, is often called the best um, uh, uh, foreign or anybody's uh, treatment of uh, coming to Japan and doing a walking tour of Japan by the late great Alan Booth, who was an Asahi um, writer uh, who died of uh, stomach cancer in the, I think, late 1980s. Um, but uh, he was quite a, a fluent Japanese speaker and quite a uh, sarcastic, amusing writer um, who both loved and hated Japan, as I guess we all do. Very good book if you want to read, if you want to learn about Japan and uh, uh, many, many aspects of Japan and being a foreigner in Japan. That's a good one. Okay, um, I wanted to point out, wow, I've got a couple of these books. Sometimes I go to Book Off, the amusingly named second-hand uh, book chain in Japan, and often they don't have many English books, but they usually have these kinds of um, art catalogues that I find quite amusing, quite interesting to look at. That This is from the Courtauld Collection, I used to work for Court Old Socks. I'm glad to see that they uh, spent some of their money on some of their money <laughs> um, on um, impressionist art. Um, and you know, if you go into the go into the shop, you can find various things. So like you know, like this kind of stuff. Where it's it's all written in Japanese, although I think in the back it's got some stuff in English. Uh, maybe not. But uh, you know, it's got it's a, it's like, it looks like a Cezanne. Uh, but I find it very interesting to look at and um, uh, to help teach me to do a bit of art and um, uh, it's always something to look out for in these second-hand bookshops even if you don't speak much uh, Japanese. So that's one example. I found another one I just wanted to show you. The Pula, Pula Museum of Art. They make perfumes I think and soaps and stuff. Uh, but they also, they also have a museum in um, Hakone which is a you know, nice place to go for um, for a hot bath or whatever. Here's one that is a page I turned to. There's another Manet painting. 
and they've got some, you know, some great, can you see that? Great works of art, and this one is a good one because it's got the text in Japanese and then translated into English, and it's quite well done. And they've got some great stuff, some, uh, this book. Um, I doubt that you can find it, but if you can, I recommend it. It's probably more likely that you'll be able to go to the um, to the museum in Hakone. That's what I want to do next time. I'm that, in that neck of the woods. Okay, there's that one moving swiftly along. Something not Japanese. Here's Detroit by Charlie Laduff. Um, he's a great uh, uh, sort of. Uh, uh, he's a journalist um, in the. Um, What's his name tradition? The Gonzo uh, journalism tradition of um, Hunter S. Thompson, that style of writing, though less drugs. Maybe more alcohol, but less drugs. Um, he writes great stuff, though. Uh, for example, <laughs> here's, a, here's a, just the beginning of his uh, a chapter. It's, the chapter is called Screwed. I've just got this at random. They arrive at work at 7.25am, and many of their cars are rusting buckets of crud. Except for the bosses, the boss drives a Volvo. Walk in the door at the screw factory, and the first thing you notice is the enemy, the time clock. Then you notice the stink of oil vapours and solvents, the dispiriting yellow light, the slippery floors, the caked and peeling walls. I could go on. That sounds a bit depressing, but that's his style of writing. Um, he's not depressing at all, actually, but um, just just, just uh, noir. And it's, but it's, it's not fiction, it's journalism. If you haven't heard of this guy, I recommend you get this one. Uh, really, really good. Uh, okay, uh, let's see, zooming back to Japan. Um, another guy, Kenzo Kitakata. This one's called The Cage. Actually, his best book is not here. Oops, sorry, I just got a strange error message. Uh, the uh, His best book is not here. Um, Ashes, uh, really good book. Uh, uh, Yakuza Noir from the point of view of a Yakuza. So I really enjoyed reading that one. This one's a more standard one, The Cage, about a supermarket manager who with, with a black past, whose past comes to haunt him and uh, he goes bad or, or good. I mean, his heroes, of course, are baddies. They're anti-heroes, but they're also kind of heroic, do heroic things, or understandable things at least. Good stuff. Another one of his books, Winter Sleep. I enjoyed this. Immensely, being a bit of an arty farty git myself, I enjoy art. And this is about an artist uh, and, a, um, and a, a murderer and his next con. It's a bit arty farty this one, but it is all, all about art and the artist's role in society and, and how, how to make art and what's the point and selling out or not selling out. What does it all mean? I don't know. Read the book. It's good. Um, and finally, I just wanted to show you one of these books I got uh, from the internet, which is The Author's Guide to uh, Cover Design by Stuart Batch, Bash. I'm not sure how you say his name. Heard about this on a podcast and ordered it and it arrived within two days. It's printed in Japan, but it's, it's like uh, print on demand. You, know, you just order it and it's printed wherever the printers are and comes to you. Uh, that's why I really wanted to show you that. It's an okay book um, about the basics of how to make a, uh, the right kind of cover. Basically, it suggests uh, hiring somebody, like somebody like Stuart Beige, um, uh, but gives you some basic tips, which I'm more interested in. I kind of think um, if you're going to self-publish, I think you should learn how to do the cover too, or at least I want to. I have artistic pretensions, uh, or an interest in it anyway, and I want to do a good job, so I read this book. It's a bit of a sales job for him, for his services, but has some good useful tips. Um, so uh, I think more and more, but I've ordered another book, um, not by him, but uh, uh, somebody else. Uh, and that was uh, self-published as well, I didn't realise at all. I think it's really quite spreading a lot. Um, I mean, the, the quality is, is just the same as a um, traditionally published book, but it's more... Well, I mean, 70% of the profits goes, goes to this guy. Yeah, Amazon gets their 30%, but, you know. Um, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, it's the way of publishing, and um, it's quite interesting to see that. Okay, I'm waffling. 
those are just some highlights from the 100 books that I read. As I say, please have a look down at the, uh, the bottom of this uh, video and there'll be links to all 100 that I read. You might find something if you're into writing, art, Japan or uh, crime books. There's quite a few there. Okay, talk to you next month.